So here we are on our new Hughes 21 Red Fisher, and it's a ground up, brand new design that we brought out in model year 2021. And it's backed by popular demand, as you could say. We used to have a, a 21 Red Fisher a number of years ago. And to be honest with you, we stopped building them because people weren't buying them. Uh, a lot of people were going to more technical skiffs or going up to the, to the bay boats and sort of there was a gap left in the middle. But clearly a lot of people love big flats boats and we know that because we've had people of sort of a groundswell come and tell us we want another big 21 flats boat. So here we are, ground up design. There's a bunch of really great things about this boat I want to show you. So if you'll spend a couple minutes with me, I want to walk you through the whole boat. So you probably already noticed just how big this boat is and it's 21 feet, six inches long. It's got an eight six beam, very wide boat. It's extremely stable as I walk around. Notice that well, I'll walk around the gunnels and all that kind of stuff. But just tons of deck space. And this boat is sort of designed for that person that really likes to do a lot of backcountry fishing. We'll ha we have tons of live well space. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it carries a load really, really well. It's very fast. We can put up to a, a 350 horsepower engine on the boat. And, and the boat with its nice beaminess and a lot of volume in the hull holds that engine really well, stays nice and balanced. So the boat is great for backcountry applications, even shallow water, it drafts only 14 inches. But then it's got the size to it to cover a lot of ground um, very quickly with those big engine packages and maybe go out on the beach, take a lot of bait with you and do a lot of near shore fishing. And so it's just a really great all around boat. As you can see from the start, great big deck up here. So. This is super nice because obviously you can fit multiple people up here. A lot of people not only are going to use it for that backcountry application, like I said, but a lot of people like this style boat. Um, they're going to like this boat in particular for doing a lot of bass fishing as well. A lot of people, you know, like fishing both bass and then near shore stuff. And this boat does that really well. You have tons of deck space. You can have two anglers up here throwing. You can also put in your bass seat plate up here as well and have a, a, a nice swivel seat. So that obviously works great for bass fishing. But you can see how big this deck is as I move forward. So the boat comes standard with the 36 volt trolling motor system and plates in the deck. And so you can drill and tap your choice of trolling motor um, aftermarket if you want to, but we factory option the boats with the, the motor guides and the 101 pound thrust. So plenty of thrust to handle pretty much any current situation. The cord comes down through this little notch right here, which is really nice. So you're not going to pinch the cord or anything. Comes into this great big anchor locker. You can see the anchor locker has those friction hinges so that lid stays up out of the way when it needs to. Big wide opening so it's easy to get in and out. That cord comes down and then ties into your, back, your trolling motor plug back here to the back. And so that trolling motor trolling motor plug stays nice and out of the elements. It's not going to corrode or, or, or uh, go bad on you or anything like that because it's nice and protected in there. But also you have this nice big anchor locker, okay? And you need an anchor, you know, you just do for safety precautions. But if you're going to have an anchor locker um, and need an anchor, you better have an anchor locker that's big enough to, to um, occupy an anchor that's big enough to hold the boat and also enough road and chain to, to keep you secure if you were to lose, you know, um, electrical or something like that, or just an anchor locker for the, I mean, an anchor for the sandbar, or even in some applications, you know, it's nice to have the anchor as opposed to have a, having the trolling motor on that anchor lock because that could be a little loud or something. Um, so you can just put that anchor in here and there's plenty of space for it. it. Does a really great job with that. We close that down. So I move back here. I can see I'm on a great big storage hatch right here. This has the the twin latches, they're lockable, so you can lock everything in here. All right, I pull it up, you can see how easily that comes up because you have these two nice gas shocks that help you pull that lid up. But this is just a massive box. You can see it in here how much room there is. You could bring everything you ever needed on board and you're gonna probably have to go buy some more tackle just to fill it. So we'll close this up put those down. That seal's really nice and secure. You have these big gasketed lid troughs and then all the water flows right down in the cockpit. This is a self bailing boat so that water flows right out the back end of the boat. A lot of times on boats like this, um, 
too low to the water, you don't get good deck drainage, okay? This boat is high enough where you have that positive flow down for that drainage out the back of the boat, but it's not so high, and this is important, it's not so high that when you're on the trolling motor that the wind is really gonna impact you. Um, that's a big deal. A lot of times bay boats are pretty high. That wind, if you get bean two or something like that, is gonna push that boat. This boat is low enough to slip under that wind so you can keep really good control of it on the trolling motor um, because it does have that low profile, but at the same time, high enough to be nice and comfortable on board and then have that water flow out the back and the, and the um, um, and that deck drainage, all right? I'm gonna stand up here on the gunners. You can see how wide they are. You can see how stable this boat is. I'm actually rocking this boat right now. You can't see much rock to it at all. Um, really nice, because if you're landing a big fish next to the gunnel here, and you have multiple people leaning over, you're not gonna tip over to the side, have water pouring and all like that. Also, just in terms of getting around the boat. That's one of the things that people really love about the, the um, bigger flats boats and what they a lot of people miss um, when they go to a bay boat is the ability to get around and and not have people in your way or stuff like that and i'm going to show you more of that when we get to the back of the boat and just how easy it is to get around the console and move around but that's really important in a lot of situations um, but especially if you have a big fish around on and you have to move around the boat quickly very easy to move around this boat there are not any missteps or anything like that just a, a great great wide open fishing platform so we'll move back to the cooler here. And the cooler is the perfect size. It gives you plenty of walk around room, even with rods in the, in the console rod holders. Those are standard on the boat, port and starboard. You have this nice 35 quart Ingle cooler that comes standard with the, the cushion package that you can do just as this is done here. Really nice looking cushion package. It's super comfortable. It's a great person for, place for somebody to ride up front here. You have plenty of leg room, um, setbacks really, really nice. So if you're going to be doing all these kinds of fishing, um, near shore, inshore, oftentimes that takes, you know, maybe a few different sizes of tackle, light spinners for inshore, heavier spinners for near shore, that kind of thing. So you need good rod storage. So this boat has it, achieves it a couple ways. We talked about the, the console rod racks that are standard on the boat, but you also have these undergonal rod racks, which are really nice. You have tubes forward so you can protect the forward end of your rods, especially nice for fly rods. This will accommodate um, nine foot fly rods, no problem. So you can put these rods right under here, under the gunnel. They're nice and out of the way, uh, but they're still very easily accessible, which I, I like a whole bunch. They secure up under here with the straps. They're not gonna bounce out or anything like that. Another thing that's important a lot of times, you know there are a lot of boats with under gunnel rod storage, but oftentimes these gunnels aren't wide enough on those boats where the rods don't stick out into the passageway. So you're constantly hitting your ankles as you're walking by them and hitting the, uh, not only bothering your ankles, but also you're, you're bending your rod handle, I mean your reel handles and that kind of stuff. These, they're nice tuck, way tucked up under here so they, they stay completely out of the way and you're not gonna bump into your rods or anything as you walk by. That's also really important forward so that they're tucked up under the waist, out of the way and under the gunnel. So if you're stepping off the deck, you have no chance of stepping actually on the rod as you're coming down. That can happen as well. So these, there's no prospect of that at all because they're nice tucked up underneath and just a great place to store rods. But like I said, have them easily accessible if you need to get to them quickly. So there's a number of things you can do to color match on this boat. And you can make your console one color, you can make your deck another color, or match it up, you know, it can match to the sides of the whole, of the whole sides as well. So you can do a number of different things. You can also match up the color via the under gunnel pads right here. And we offer two kinds, we offer our two colors. We offer the, the faux teak and the, the gray and black as you see here. We also offer it the faux teak and the, and the brown and black. But not only does it accent the boat nicely, but it also gives a nice padded surface for your rods to to lean up against so, so they're not going to be right up against that gel coat and either mar the rod or, or the gel coat. We'll move around to the, to the uh, back end of the console here. You can see how when I moved over this way how easy it was for me to get around. There's so much gunnel room there, um, or space between the console and the gunner. But you're looking here at the back side of the console. It was really important to us that we made the console big enough so you could use the bigger electronics. You have the Garmin big 12 inch screen here. Um, it's nice and wide enough where you get some wind break from the console itself. So I like that a lot. Everything's at hand's reach right here. Um, 
hand right on the, the binnacle. When you're on the throttle, you're up on here. You have your, your trim tabs right there as well, so you don't have to take your hand off the binnacle. You have the boat come standard with the, the jack plate. And you have the blinker style switch, so your hand, went, just like on those trim tabs, you don't have to take your hand off the steering wheel to, to operate the jack plate. So you can manipulate all the controls very easily without having to remove your hand from the most important things, which is obviously the, the throttle and the, the steering wheel as well. You have this nice backlit switch panel with the toggle switches, breakers underneath. If you have a breaker, I mean a, a switch that or a breaker that pops, circuit that pops, all you have to do is reset that um, breaker and you're right back into action. 12 volt plug in here, standard. Uh, that's so that, you know, if you want to have a, uh, a spotlight for night or something like that, it's easy to plug in. It's right up here. And then you have the comp compass standard as well. And then the Yamaha gauge. But perfectly laid out, nice and wide, like I said, but not too wide where it takes up too much space in the boat. Um, another really great design feature about this boat is this whole setup back here on the seating. And the backrest is an option. Um, it's very comfortable. So if, if I were personally going to buy the boat, I would definitely do the backrest option. But it's really nice, what's really nice about it is it doesn't impede anything, your ability to open up the cushions or get in the live well or anything like that. And I'll show you. So all these cushions are attached to the lids, all right? And so you don't have to move the cushion out of the way to open up the lid. That's a big deal. A lot of people don't realize. And, and, bat, and flats boats, you're going to have a bench cushion back here. And oftentimes, um, to get into the hatches under here, you have to take that bench cushion and fold it back into the cockpit. It's hard to get back in there, and then you have to reach over top of it. Well, as you can see here, we came up, came up with this clever little design where the cushions stay on the hatches themselves. You can easily get to the latch and open it all in one fell swoop. So you don't have to move the cushions the way, anything like that at all. The backrest comes out of the way. You can see this is a great big storage box in here. I have the gas shock assisted lid that helps me open that. Once again, deep lid troughs. You have your gasket in here that helps keep all that stuff dry. I can close that just like that. These do remove very easily. They're on little basically plug-in knobs that you can pop those cushions off so if you leave your boat outside um, and you don't want to get keep your cushions outside in the sun baking all the time you just pop those off put them in the garage and then you can put them right back on so this is a really nice setup we did it also so that the two hatches here even though it's one box could be operated independently and what's really nice about that is if, if you have one person seated here, you can open up the other hatch without having to make them move or something like that. If you had a big long bench seat here to get into either one of the, to get in the storage box, everybody would have to get up. Um, that's not the case at all here, and that's why it's designed just the way it is. So if you had people there still seated, you don't have to move them. They can just go ahead and get up, um, or this person can get up and get under the storage box. But you can see how big that storage box is. Between the bow, Big storage box, these storage boxes here, all lockable. There's no way um, you're gonna ever fill up all the storage on this boat. And, and that's important to us because obviously you're gonna be doing a lot of different kinds of fishing on the boat. So you need, a, need places to put all that various gear to support that. All right, we're gonna step back to the back deck here. Um, as you can see, it's easy for me to get back around here. That's one of the things that people really, really love about a big flats boat. You'll talk to guides about them and they'll say, yeah, I love the 21 the big flats boat because I can move around really easily around my clientele. You don't have to get people out of the way or that kind of thing. And that's what's really nice about this boat. As I mentioned before, one of the things that we really wanted to design is, in this boat is basically um, the ability to catch a lot of bait and take it a long ways. And uh, we talked about a little bit the engine package and I'll get back on that in here in a minute talk about how we sort of designed the boat around the bigger engines to, let, to go that long ways. But also you need a lot of live well bait capacity. If you're going to spend a lot of time catching bait to go a long ways, you don't want to run out of bait. So standard on the boat, is this big center well right here, okay? That well right there is just over 40 gallons, has a drain system in it that allows you to uh, moderate the water and create basically an equilibrium in there. So you can pretty much get that thing uh, pressurized so your bait is not going to slosh. So, Great big well right here, nice and blue, so it's going to keep the bait nice and calm. Has a couple
couple inflows that can be adjusted as a, you can do the, the uh, recirc option on it as well. So that closed system, so you can circulate that water. Let's say you're on the, at the um, bait or tackle shop and you want to grab some bait, you can throw it in here, um, put on that recirc well, and you can actually keep that, that pump flowing um, on your way to the ramp and keep that bait alive. Or if you get into some kind of water quality issue where you want to just basically circulate the water in the well but not bring in any other water, you can do that with that recirc pump. All right, so big opening. Once again, stays nice and up with those friction hinges. Great spot. I have more storage space here. Okay, this is where I have good, easy access to my fuel water separate here, separator. You have your power pole pump right here. Um, we'll have single power poles, eight foot, or you can put 10 foot on there, or you can put the duals that come right off the back of the jack plate there. So the pumps are nice, they're in their own contained compartment, not down in the bilge or in the elements or anything like that. And just more storage space right there, which is, like I said, you can never have enough of that. All right, look over here. It's an optional, what we would call a release well. Okay, it can also be a storage box. Um, these boxes, these wells are insulated. But this is, this is an option to make it into a release well, and it's 40 gallons as well, um, or just about. So between the two, you're gonna have probably just a touch over 80 gallons of live well space, which is pretty remarkable, especially on a boat this size. Obviously, the tournament guys are gonna love this because it, it gives them the capability to have their, their bait in one well and then bring their, their tournament winning fish back to the dock in another. As you can see, it's plenty long to do that. It's much longer than any, any fish you're gonna be allowed to bring back to the weigh-in. Um, and it has, it's wide enough to be able to accommodate multiple fish for sure. Once again, it has that drain system and it. it allows you to uh, moderate that flow so you can make it just perfect in terms of inflow and outflow. But at the same time, even if you have it as a, an optional release well um, or option it, that way, option it that way, you can go ahead and use this as another dry storage box. All right, so there you go. And then finally back here on the back end, when dealing with the lid, we have this great big opening to rigging, to your rigging. And on a boat this size, that's very unique. And you can see how big and open this is, how easy everything is to get to. I'm looking at everything that I would need to um, address if I were on the water or anything like that. I have all my bilge pump down here. I have my live well pumps. I have all my drainage systems. I have those big seacocks. Any water, any uh, through hole below the water line is gonna have that seacock on it so that I can go ahead and cut that off if for whatever reason I was to get a breach upstream of that so I can cut out any water from the outside of the boat. Also, unlike the live well pumps and that kind of thing, it allows you to actually be able to switch out a live pump on the water. I can just shut off the valve. Um, the pumps have the Deutsch connector, so it's a really plug, easy plug and play system. We build all our wiring harnesses in-house, unique to each boat, all copper tin wire. They're labeled. Um, so you know exactly what wire goes to where, to where. And between all that, the layout, the big access here, this just makes for a really, really easy uh, situation to be able to maintain your boat. So that's important to us. You can see it right here. It's very well, nicely laid out and easy to maintain. I mentioned the importance of the need to uh, this boat to have a whole lot of range. And obviously the way you get that is with a, a large engine. So the boat can take up to a 350. We have a 300 on here right now, the Yamaha 300. This is a great setup. The boat is really well balanced with it. It's very quick, um, light load. You're gonna be you know, low 60s, somewhere in there. Um, at 40 miles per hour, you're gonna be burning uh, three and a half miles per gallon. The tank has a 50 gallon fuel cell. So that's a ton of range. So you really can sort of catch bait in one zip code and then go fish in another and then run all the way back to the, your tournament weigh in all very quickly, all in one day, uh, very easily and not having to get a bunch of uh, fuel or anything like that. So it does a really great setup with the 300. You can also put the VF250 on it. That's gonna be a great setup as well if you're maybe not as interested in the speed aspect of things. But the boat balances the big engine very well and that's really important. Well, I'm on the back of the deck. I wanted to take note of how high the boat is out of the water. Like I said before, it's not so high that it provides a good 
windage for to catch the wind when you're on the trolling motor or something like that. But oftentimes on boats like this, especially with big power on the back of it, they really squat a whole lot. And then not only does the boat ride like this, obviously under idle you're drafting more and that kind of stuff. But in addition, anytime you come down off plane, you have water wash up over the back of the deck. If you're in any kind of seas, you have water constantly washing up over the back of the deck, coming into your hatches and that kind of stuff. This boat at that 8.6 beam has enough volume to really float this engine well. And so you're not sitting there basically right at the water line and always gonna have salt water washing up on the back of the boat. So it does a really great job supporting this engine and you're nice and elevated enough to keep all the water out and you feel nice and secure, but at the same time, not so much that you're really at the mercy of the wind. So I hope I've done a good enough job showing you exactly what this boat does and how well it's going to do it in, in those near shore, inshore, backcountry applications, even bass fishing. So it's extremely versatile. You have a ton of live well space, um, big engine to be able to carry that bait long distances, cover a bunch of range, secondary live well setup for if you're a tournament uh, angler, that does really, really well. Plenty of space to move around, very stable boat, just an excellent, excellent fishing platform. So if you want to learn more, um, you go to Hughes.com. You can type in your zip code there and find your local dealer and you can go check out the boat in person and, even, and even get aboard one and run it. I think you'll be really, really pleased.